It's my great pleasure to welcome you <laughs> to this highly anticipated gathering focused on the recipe for reliable real-world evidence. Today, we embark on a journey that will shape the future of evidence-based medicine and healthcare in our region. The rapid advancement in technology and the increasing availability of vast amounts of real-world data have opened up new horizons for healthcare research and decision-making. Real-world evidence has emerged as a powerful tool offering us the opportunity to gain valuable insights from the diverse and complex healthcare landscape that surrounds us. Yet in this era of big data and analytics, it is crucial to acknowledge that not all evidence is created equal. Reliability, validity, and transparency are the pillars upon which real world evidence must stand. As we gather here today, we share a common purpose to define the recipe for reliable real-world evidence that can guide clinical practice, shape health policies, and ultimately improve patient outcomes. So first and foremost, we must emphasize the importance of collaboration. The Odyssey community has exemplified the power of collective intelligence, bringing together researchers, clinicians, data scientists, policymakers from diverse backgrounds. By working hand in hand, we can pool our expertise harmonize our methodologies and overcome the challenges inherent in analyzing real world data. Standardization is another key ingredient in our recipe. Consistent data models, such as the OMOP common data model, which we all know, provide a foundation for harmonizing disparate data sources, ensuring interoperability and enabling large scale analyses. By adopting standardized approaches, we enhance the comparability and the replicability applicability of our research, enabling us to generate robust evidence that stands the test of time. So transparency is the third vital element in our recipe. In an era where trust um, in science is paramount, it is essential that we are open and transparent in our methods, assumptions, and our findings. Transparent reporting of data sources, our analytical techniques, and potential biases is fundamental to building confidence in the evidence we produce. However, even the most robust recipe is incomplete without the right ingredients. High quality data encompassing a broad representation of patients and populations um, is the cornerstone of reliable real world evidence. We must strive to capture the full spectrum of healthcare experiences, ensuring that no group is left behind. By incorporating diverse perspectives, we can address healthcare disparities, understand the impact of interventions across different populations, and work towards equitable healthcare for all. So lastly, our recipe must be spiced with innovation. As technology continues to evolve at an unprecedented pace, we have a wealth of tools and methodologies at our disposal. Machine learning, natural language processing, and distributed analytics are just a few of the examples of the cutting edge techniques that can propel our research forward. By embracing innovation, we can uncover hidden patterns, generate novel insights, and accelerate the translation of evidence into practice. So today, as we convene at this Odyssey Asia Pacific meeting, let us remember that the pursuit of reliable real world evidence is not a solitary endeavor. It is a collective effort that requires our shared commitment, perseverance, and collaboration. So together, we can shape the future of evidence-based medicine, making a tangible impact on the health and well-being of individuals and populations across the world and Asia Pacific. So I thank every, um, each and every one of you for your joining us on this transformative journey. May our discussions be fruitful, our collaborations flourish, and our collective efforts pave the way for a future where reliable, real-world evidence guides every aspect of healthcare decision-making. So I'd like to also thank all of the sponsors and the people that made uh, this happen, um, particularly Sarah Seeger for our beautiful koala, uh, and all of the um, people who have uh, currently sponsored this event, uh, the University of South Australia, University of New South Wales, the Medicines Intelligence Centre of Research Excellence, the ARDC, who has um, sponsored tomorrow's uh, workshop event, and IQVIA for um, sponsoring our lightning talk presentation. So thank you, each and every one of you, um, for your uh, kind support. Uh, and lastly, uh, I'd just like to say that instead of uh, speaker um, presence this time around, um, what we've done is we have um, supported the Deadly Science uh, uh, charity. 
So Deadly Science is Australia's leading Indigenous STEM charity, which works with over 800 schools and community organisations across the states and territories. And they provide STEM education um, opportunities for those in our rural communities. Um, so we thought that would be a, a great thing for us to donate to, to help um, our Indigenous communities to um, get on this informatics and um, evidence journey with us. So thank you very much. Everybody. So it's, it's my privilege to be able to, to um, provide a, a brief perspective about Odyssey as a global community, where we've been and where, where we're going. And I hope that this uh, uh, motivates some of the conversations we're going to have as an APAC community uh, throughout the rest of the, today's conversation. Together, we are all on a journey. We're, we're on this journey trying to translate data that's captured during their routine course of clinical care and turn that into reliable evidence that can be used to inform decisions around the world. Uh, and this journey uh, turns out to be a difficult meandering path, in part because there's lots of different types of data and there's lots of different types of evidence, and it's hard to know what actually makes that evidence reliable. If we think about the types of evidence that we could generate from electronic health record data, administrative claims data, clinical registry data that's captured during routine clinical care, we can classify these into three primary categories. There's clinical characterization types of analyses, descriptive statistics about disease natural history and treatment utilization and the incidence of events, which can be used for quality improvement. There's population level effect estimation, so causal inference about questions of safety surveillance and comparative effectiveness. And there's patient level prediction, so the application of machine learning algorithms uh, to be able to guide questions such as uh, precision medicine and disease interception. Each of these different types of evidence uh, warrants different types of analytical solutions and requires care and consideration of different types of data appropriately to make sure that that evidence is reliable. Of course, we're also facing lots of different types of data that we can be working with. The differences uh, are, are, are pretty vast, but it can include differences in populations, care settings, data capture processes, uh, and health systems. And really what we're trying to do together is try to determine how can we take this disparate sets of data and generate disparate sorts of evidence, all while being focused on generating reliable, actionable information that can meaningfully and incredibly uh, inform clinical care. Part of why we are here together uh, is, is hopefully many of you are um, aligned with the mission of our Odyssey Global Community, which is to improve health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate the evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. And when we started the Odyssey Global Community, it was recognized that no individual, no organization can tackle the problem of that journey from data to evidence alone. And we really require an active and open collaboration across all stakeholder groups around the world. And so it's really gratifying for me to see a packed room here in Australia uh, thinking about the problems not just local to, um, uh, local to Sydney, local to Australia, local to the Asia Pacific, uh, region, uh, but to think about uh, how all of those pieces fit in on a truly international and global perspective. Uh, now, show of hands, how many people here are actually, this is their first Odyssey event of some sort? Okay, about like half the room or so. Um, so I hope that this will be the first of many. Um, what I'd like to do is just briefly summarize how we work as an Odyssey global community and welcome those of you who are new to, to thinking whether or not this might be a community for you uh, to find your home uh, in our community. Within Odyssey, we really try to focus on collaborations, and we have many different types of collaborations that take place. We collaborate on open community data standards. So you're going to hear a lot throughout the day about the OMOP Common Data Model as a, an open community data standard that has been established and is maintained by our community. We also maintain the Odyssey standardized vocabularies, which are the linchpin to the OMOP Common Data Model as a community effort. We collaborate on open source development, so we, we write open source software and make it available for everybody to conduct analysis against their data. So if you are a programmer and interested in either designing, testing, documenting, or coding up um, solutions, there's a place for you in our community. We collaborate on methodologic research because we realize that there's a lot we don't know about how to analyze electronic health record data, and we need to not only try to, uh, try to establish new scientific best practices, but we need to empirically evaluate them to prove that indeed we are generating reliable evidence. And uh, we collaborate on clinical evidence generation. We try to identify and discover questions that are matter to patients, to regulators, to clinicians, and to try to generate evidence that can be used in clinical care. Odyssey also has the world's largest data network. 
And the data network that we describe here is data sources whereby any organization who has access to patient level data can convert their data to the OMOP common data model. They can download and install open source software tools securely within their local environment. And they have the opportunity to participate in any of the Odyssey community events. As a distributed data network, our basic principle is that we never share patient level data. Rather, we bring the question to the data and we share evidence, we share answers to questions that were generated through statistical analysis. And we do that through Odyssey network studies, whereby any researcher, any of you in this room, can decide on a research question, specify an analysis, prepare a, 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 a protocol and an analysis specification that can be codified using those open source tools that I mentioned earlier. And those, that protocol, that specification, those tools can be made publicly available and any data partner across the network can download that code, execute the analysis and share back those results publicly such that all of us can collaborate on interpreting those results and disseminating the evidence that's available. So a uh, show of hands for those of you that are new, uh, is there a place for you here in the community? Show of hands. Most, okay, I see a few people who raised their hand earlier that didn't raise their hand, so hopefully by the end of this, we'll find a place for you. Now my job in terms of this kickoff is to share kind of where we've been as a community and where we're going. I'll highlight that um, some of the work that I'm gonna pull out is part of our annual report that we share at our Odyssey Global Symposium, and it's a book that we call Our Journey. I encourage you to download and take a look at it if you're interested. And so some of the statistics I'm gonna show are based on our annual uh, summary that I'll try to update. So this is our map of collaborators. As of the end of last year, we had over 3,000 researchers in 80 countries um, uh, scattered, scattered across, across the globe. And what does it mean to be a collaborator? It simply means you come to the community and you say hi. There's no cost of membership. There's no uh, uh, requirements other that you uh, believe in the mission and you want to find a way to contribute and participate and learn alongside all of your friends. Um, it's not just about being all over the world, but it's also who. We try to very deliberately be a multi-stakeholder uh, consortium. So we welcome folks from industry, academia, government, uh, uh, technology, health systems. And we also really encourage multidisciplinary thinking from clinical sciences, epidemiology, informatics, statistics, uh, a wide array of disciplines that we're welcoming to try to bring all of that collective expertise together to tackle the problems that we're working on as a community. Uh, we use the OMOP common data model as an open community data standard. This is the cartoon schematic representing this relational database structure that allows us to store patient level data in a common referent framework. At the heart of that is our standardized vocabularies that allows us to not only standardize the structure of the data, but also the content by allowing us to speak a common language across all of the databases who have chosen to adopt this standard. The vocabulary itself is one of Odyssey's um, uh, most substantial community resources that we uh, actively maintain. The standardized vocabularies currently contains over 10 million clinical concepts, over 80 million concept relationships, and uh, over 130 vocabularies. And this is basically our attempt to identify source vocabularies that are across the globe and to be able to establish common mappings between those source vocabularies and identif community-identified standards to represent each of the clinical domains that we work in. Now, as a community, we've been working hard to try to improve this community resource because we recognize that it's the backbone to everything that we do. Earlier this year, Anna Osterpolitz uh, ran a landscape assessment where we, we uh, heard from over 180 participants in the community about how they're using the vocabulary, what their challenges are, and what are the opportunities for us as a community to improve that. And I encourage all of you to take a look at that if you're interested in the vocabulary as a resource and how either you want to be contributing to its production or potentially um, thinking about how you want to be a consumer and a user of that. But one of the things that came out of that was a specific need for us to establish an open community roadmap uh, that very clearly communicates exactly what we currently have resources to develop over the next two years within the vocabulary and to create a process for community contributions so that we can augment what we're currently supporting through the Odyssey Central Coordinating Center. And so I encourage you, uh, we've made great progress over the first six months of the year in trying to harden our process for the vocabulary development and I encourage you to look at the resources that the community's made. 
Now, as a community, uh, I mentioned that we have the world's largest data network. Um, we have identified, or organizations have reached out to us to tell us that over 450 data sources have been converted to the OMOP common data model around the world. That covers over 370 electronic health record systems, 30 or some odd registries and administrative claim systems. This covers over 40 different countries and conservatively estimates to be 12% of the world's population. That means that 12% that, uh, of the world's population has been standardized to a single data model. That is an intriguing number, but I would actually say as a com for our community, it represents an obligation that we have to figure out how to harness the use of that data to generate reliable evidence to give back to not just that 12% of the population, but the entire world who's waiting for reliable evidence to make decisions. We collaborate through work groups. We have a wide range of work groups. Anybody in the Odyssey community can start up a work group. All that matters is for you to say, I have an idea and somewhere I'd like to collaborate. And it's amazing how you'll find in a community of thousands of people that somebody else has a shared interest in that same idea and wants to partner and collaborate with you. Um, and so I uh, thank the leadership of all of these community volunteers who have decided to lead one aspect or another. And I see several of you in the room here today. We also have Odyssey regional chapters representing geographic areas with uh, common co-located interests. I wanna particularly thank Nicole, who's leading our Odyssey Australia group and uh, coordinating this meeting um, is a big accomplishment uh, for that regional chapter, as well as Jason who hosted us just last year uh, in Taiwan. Now, Odyssey is itself is just an open collaborative. We've got lots of individuals, but we really try to work with other community initiatives to try to support their activities, however that may be. I'm just highlighting a few that are very large national efforts, um, both in the US and Europe. We collaborate with the US Food and Drug Administration uh, and with the National Institutes of Health. Uh, in Europe, we're actively collaborating with the European Medicines Agency. And in, in this case, when I say Odyssey is collaborating with them, what I really mean is the community members uh, are working with these organizations, applying some of the open community data standards and the open source tools that has been developed in the community to bring them to specific problems brought to bear within these communities. Uh, I mentioned that Odyssey is focused on open source development. It's remarkable to see how much progress has been made in the development of analytic tools to analyze observational data within our community. This is just a very uh, long list of distinct items of contributors who have released new software just in the last six months as part of our Hades ecosystem of software. Um, Martin Shumi and Mark Suchard are here. They lead our Hades effort, but it's truly now grown to a pretty substantial community effort whereby we now have open source standardized tools to support that entire journey from data evidence, whether it be you're focused on transforming your data or now that your data is transformed, you want to be able to form characterization, estimation, prediction studies, and we have open source tools ready and accessible for you. Odyssey has also been very productive as a community in generating scholarship and releasing it out there. We have an open community dashboard that monitors our progress. It's at dash.odyssey.org. And if you go out there right now, you'd see that we have over four, 580 publications um, that have been cited over 13,000 times over the last um, decade since we kind of got this small community started. Probably what I'm most proud of, though, is the diversity of co-authors uh, and seeing how many different people are joining the journey, participating in generating research that they're sharing. What I'd like to share with you briefly, just four examples of the diverse types of research that we have in the community. Um, we publish on topics of data standards. Uh, here's a paper that was recently published in the Journal of Biomedical Informatics that focused on how in our community we're trying to standardize the process of natural language processing and structuring free text information into structured data that we can use for analysis. And, and Hua's here and, and has been leading our NLP work group and we've made tremendous progress in seeing how many different approaches there are in the community that can be harmonized together. We, we collaborate in uh, methodologic research um, one, of, uh, um, uh, one of our uh, early stage researchers uh, helped spearhead this study that focused on looking at how do we do vaccine safety surveillance. The typical approach that many regulators take is that they apply some blunt instrument as a tool as a first stage screening approach, followed by some more nuanced analysis. And actually our method of research suggests that actually that approach may be suboptimal and that given the technologies that are in place, we may actually be better off in terms of earlier detection of safety signals and reducing false positive findings if we actually just start by performing the correct analysis right away. 
We collaborated open source development. This is an example of a paper that was published in Nature Digital Medicine, highlighting new approaches to heterogeneity of treatment effect assessment. Uh, and here what's exciting is that uh, a student at Erasmus um, that, that published this not only published a paper showing that the method works, but also published the source code so that now anybody can actually grab this st standardized package and run their own uh, HDE analysis on their own CDM uh, and, and, and explore um, su subpopulation findings. And of course, we're publishing on clinical applications, trying to generate evidence that's, that, that's, that's useful for specific questions. I'll highlight a recent paper that was published in uh, eClinical Medicine, where we analyzed uh, looking at adverse events associated with vaccines and trying to understand how often they happened uh, following uh, COVID uh, infection. And what's notable about this study is we had 26 databases in 11 countries providing us background incidence rates. And a large part of this information was directly used um, by regulators to support their understanding of the benefit risk trade-offs for the vaccines as they were being, uh, being uh, monitored. In Odyssey, we uh, are trying to drive educational content. Uh, we actually have over 500, um, 500 videos that we've published of educational material that's been watched over 165,000 times. We have some videos that have been watched over 10,000 times, which suggests that there's a lot more people who are benefiting from the community than those that just sign up to say hi. Um, we also have created an educational platform called the Eden Academy, which has 24 courses that are freely available for you to take. If you're interested in any aspect of the journey from data evidence, there's probably a free course out there that you can take a look at. And there's been over 3,000 uh, folks that have uh, completed those courses. Now this year, one of the big educational things that we wanted to do was something that we called the Sisyphus Challenge. And you're gonna hear from Jack today uh, talking about the specific results of this. But the idea was that we wanna take people on this journey from data evidence. We need to be able to teach them how to do it, but we also actually wanna really do it and generate real evidence at the same time. And so we did something that we thought was pretty, pretty ambitious. We said, we're gonna take an eight week period of time Every week, we're gonna march through one step of the journey from data to evidence, and at the end, we're gonna have a study completed. We started this in April. So just so that you can see that there's no like uh, cards up my sleeve or anything like that, you are gonna see the results of an international network study here in July presented by Jack based on a question that was raised here in Australia in, in March. And so that means we went through this entire journey of educating how to do this and also executing the process uh, and, and you're gonna see the, the fruits of that process and, and hopefully um, can provide us some feedback about it. The basic principle that we're trying to follow here is that we believe that if we're going to do open community science, we need to engineer a process that is built into it to, to build trust from all stakeholders. And the idea is that not only do we need to standardize the data network to a common data model, but we also need to standardize the analytic pipeline. Decisions that are need, needed to be made need to be pre-specified. Processes for identifying appropriate data sets need to be established uh, and executed. Development of phenotypes to make sure that we actually have the appropriate populations need to be fully evaluated and vetted before we move forward. And then finally, when we perform statistical analyses, we want pre-specified objective diagnostics that tell us we can trust the estimates that we produce. And only after we pass all of this rigorous series of steps, if we pass those steps, will we agree to unblind our results and share them with the community? And if any of these rules fail, we stop and we do not move forward. There's so much distrust of observational research and, and real world evidence that's out there that we feel that there's a requirement that we create a new paradigm that puts a high standard to everything that we do. What was particularly gratifying for me about this process is that we saw the community rally around this idea of working together. So Mark and Chan that are here showed the community how to initiate a study. And we actually did four studies in parallel, and it was great to see one of them being led out of our APAC community with a collaboration between Korea and Australia, and you're gonna hear the results of that. But then we had collaborations that were focused on that step of data diagnostics. We had more collabor collaborators come together and focus on phenotype development and evaluation, and we had a wide collection of, of folks that, that enabled us to be able to go through the design and execution of analyses. And each of these individuals contributed their time and expertise to showcase how to conduct a network study, but also to work with each of the study leads to be able to execute that process specifically on the research questions that they had in mind. And so today you're gonna to hear about our study of uh, fluoroquinolones and the risk of aortic aneurysm. And I hope that you'll 
you know, think critically about that specific question and that specific answer that's going to be shared. But I want all of you to be thinking about what questions could you answer if you needed reliable evidence? What kind of questions do you think would impact uh, clinical care, health practice, regulatory policy? Because the process that we followed was clearly able to be demonstrated to be executed across a wide range of different studies. What I'd like to leave you, um, leave you with is a thought about when I keep using this phrase, reliable evidence, what does that really mean? Within Odyssey, we've been trying to emphasize the idea that we recognize that as a field at large, as a broader research community, there's a lot of distrust to the use of real world data and the application of real world evidence. And admittedly, for good reason. There is a lot of questionable evidence that has been generated using less than ideal practices. And because this data is ubiquitous, anybody can get any data set they want, do any analysis they want, attempt to uh, publish their paper in whatever journal they want. And this evidence is just a sea of information that's out there. And it's hard to discern between the evidence we can trust and the noise that is being generated by the research community at large. So I'd like to, to, to uh, have you consider these uh, six attributes of what reliable evidence should be. First, reliable evidence should be repeatable. That is, a given researcher who has the same exact question, has the exact data and the exact analysis, should be able to reproduce the exact same answer. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I will admit that I have some publications in my, in my PubMed search that I cannot actually uh, repeat. Uh, and that's because oftentimes the process of generating real-world evidence is more like a meandering journey than it is this repeatable process. And yet I think all of us learned in, in, in elementary school in our first science, science class that what it meant to be scientific was to have a repeatable process. And so we're falling short of this very basic idea, and yet by having standardized analytics and, uh, that are available, it should be possible to not think about the journey from data to evidence to be a meand meandering path but instead a truly repeatable process. The second dimension is re reproducibility. It shouldn't just be that I can generate identical results, but if we do this with full transparency and the standardized tools, anyone else given the exact same data and the exact same question, the exact same analysis, should be able to produce the exact same answer. That's fundamental to the scientific method. Most research today, I would assert, falls short of that basic idea. And yet using Odyssey tools, having a standardized R package that executes against the data set, it is now possible for someone to exchange code, watch that code run at some other site, and produce identical results. We'd also like research to be replicable. That is, it's not just about executing the same thing on the exact same data, but we'd like to be able to run the same analysis on similar data and hope to produce similar results. The idea being that if two data sets show the same type of association, then you may have greater confidence in that than if you just had one isolated pho phenomenon from one data source. I'd like to go further and say we would like to generalize uh, our findings. So not just look at similar data, but look at different data and yet generate similar results. And to this, I want to highlight specifically, if we think about Australia, I learned uh, quite a lot from the MedInfo conference that was just this last week. Uh, and Dougie gave a, gave a great presentation about the state of Odyssey Australia. But what I learned both from Dougie's presentation and, and various, various other presentations is there's extreme fragmentation here in Australia, right? You've got national GP data, you've got states governing the hospital care, you've got the pharmacy benefit system. All of these data sets represent different pockets, and many of you are doing noble work to try to figure out how to get some pieces of the pockets together and integrated. Um, but I would actually assert that, e and, and, and the consequence of that is, given that there's such fragmentation, it's really, really hard to answer important questions using Australian data alone. And so we have today here, you know, we've got regulators and, and consumers, and if we're thinking we want an answer relevant for the Australian population, it's really, really hard to even get that specific answer. But I would contend, given that the Australian population is only about, or is about 25 million um, individuals, that many questions, even if we could fully standardize all the Australian data into one data set, many questions that really matter to patients uh, throughout this country can't be answered with Australian data alone. So it's important that we be able to uh, conduct analyses in Australia and be able to understand whether or not those phenomena also exist in the broader Asia Pacific region. Is it consistent with what we would observe in Europe? or in North America. But what's important is that we don't end up in a situation where in the absence of data in Australia, that, that regulators at the TGA are sitting here having to hope 
that the effects that happened in Australia generalize from the evidence that was only generated in the US or only generated in Europe. Instead, it should be the case that Australia could lead research, could generate evidence in this population, and could learn about the generalizability across the world. And through the Odyssey framework, we believe we've made that possible. I'll also assert that another element of reliable evidence is that evidence should be robust. What I mean by that is that we should be able to conduct a wide array of different analytic approaches and generate similar findings. A lot of the methodologic research that we see is that any researcher can come up with any method that they want and generate a finding, but not necessarily know that if they happen to make a different choice of a different analysis, they might get a different result. Um, and actually, in, in Jack's presentation, we won't get into it, but we'll actually see a little bit of how different choices uh, can be made and can be standardized so that we can really conduct thorough sensitivity analysis. And then the last one here is a little bit in the weeds, but I'll highlight it. Um, we believe that given that we are generating statistical uh, results from large data sets, it's critically important that reliable evidence means that the evidence is calibrated. That is to say that you know how to interpret and trust the evidence correctly. We're going to be generating statistics, things like relative risk estimates, p-values, confidence intervals. And everyone thinks they understand what those statistics mean, but very rarely have someone actually assessed whether or not those statistics mean what they're supposed to mean in the context of data sets that have missingness, bias, measurement error, and other sorts of systematic uh, challenges. And so we need to be able to prove that our evidence is statistically consistent, and we've made tremendous progress in the Odyssey community on this. So for, for me personally, I look at the research that I've tried to do throughout my career, and I, I would admit that most of my research that I've done uh, prior to Odyssey has fallen way short of all of these six criteria, and in part because I don't think any one person, any one organization could go it along and solve these problems. This requires an open community data standard, open community uh, analytics, a network of data sets around the world of disparate sites, uh, and a willfulness to collaborate to make sure that the evidence is truly robust and reliable. And I think you're gonna see nice demonstrations of that uh, throughout today. So I'm gonna leave you with one question that I want you to mull over throughout the day. If you had an open community of researchers around, around the world, an open community data standard that was applied, uh, that was used for over 400 databases around the world, if you had established and evaluated scientific best practices that could ensure reliable evidence, and you had an open suite of open source tools that could support the entire journey from data evidence, what would you do? And I want you to think about this question because as a member of the Odyssey community, you do have all of these things at your disposal. It's just a matter of you raising your hand, saying what you want to do, and finding a lot of like-minded collaborators who are eager to work with you to make what's possible, given that we've assembled uh, together the collective skills and capabilities and uh, community uh, to make great things happen.